Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 33rd session of Daily Jesus, where we read through the Bible together every day and find traces of Jesus. Uh, today, we'll be continuing on in the book of Acts. Today, we'll be going through chapters 21 to 22. Now, in chapters 21 to 22, Paul travels to Jerusalem by boat, and the believers urge Paul to not to go as they are worried he will be captured by the high priests in Jerusalem. But despite that, Paul doesn't waver and continues to travel to Jerusalem. And also the James and the elders, they were concerned for Paul's safety and recommended a purification ceremony for those that were accompanying Paul in his journey. Paul complied with their recommendation, but not too long after, the Jews from Asia plotted to kill Paul. Noticing the danger that had befallen onto Paul, the tribune gathered his men and went out to capture and arrest Paul. And after receiving permission from the tribune, Paul testifies of how he had met Jesus. However, the, cry, the crowd who heard it rioted and said that Paul should be killed. The tribune eventually takes Paul away to be examined by flogging, but Paul defends himself using his Roman citizenship. Now we'll begin reading through the book of Acts, chapters 22 to, uh, 21 to 22. Okay, here he goes. Acts chapter 21. And when we had parted from them and set sail, we came by a straight course to Kos and the next day to Rhodes, and from there to Patara, and having found a ship crossing to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we had come in sight of Cyprus, leaving it on the left, we sailed to Syria and landed at Tyre. For there the ship was to unload its cargo. And having sought out the disciples, we stayed there for seven days. And through the Spirit, they were telling Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. When our days there were ended, we departed and went on with our journey. And they all, with wives and children, accompanied us until we were outside the city. And kneeling down on the beach, we prayed and said farewell to one another. Then we went on board the ship and they returned home. When we had finished the voyage from Tyra, we arrived at Ptolemus. And we greeted the brothers and stayed with them for one day. On the next day, we departed and came to Caesarea. And we entered the house of Philip, the evangelist, who was one of the seven and stayed with him. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. While we were staying for many days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit. This is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be imprisoned, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, we seized and said, Let the will of the Lord be done. After these days, we got ready and went up to Jerusalem. And some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us, bringing us to the house of Mnason of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we should lodge. When we had come to Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went in with us to, to James, and all the elders were present. After greeting them, he related one by one the things that God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified God. And they said to him, You see, brother, how many thousands there are among the Jews of those who have believed. They are all zealous for the law. And they have been told about you that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or walk according to our customs. What then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. Do therefore what we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take these men and purify yourself along with them and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads. Thus all will know that there is nothing in what they have been told about you, but that you, your, but that you yourself also live in observance of the law. But as for the Gentiles who have believed, we have sent a letter with our judgment that should abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from blood and from what has been strangled and from sexual immorality. 
Then Paul took the men, and the next day he purified himself along with them and went into the temple, giving notice when the days of purification will be fulfilled and the offering presented for each one of them. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who is teaching everyone everywhere against the people and the law in this place. Moreover, he even brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Trophimus the Ephesian with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was stirred up, and the people ran together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and at once the gates were shut. And as they were seeking to kill him, word came to the tribune of the cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. He at once took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the tribune came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. He inquired who he was and what he had done. Some in the crowd were shouting one thing, some another. And as he could not learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought back into the barracks. And when he came to the steps, he was actually carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd, for the mob of the people follow, followed, crying out, Away with him! As Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the tribune, May I say something to you? And he said, Do you know Greek? Are you not the Egyptian, then, who recently stirred up a revolt and led the 4,000 men of the assassins put out into the wilderness? Paul replied, I am a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, a citizen of no obscure city. I beg you, permit me to speak to the people. And when he had given him permission, Paul, standing on the steps, motioned with his hand to the people. And when there was a great hush, he addressed them in the Hebrew language, saying, Brothers and fathers, hear the defense that I now make before you. And when they, and when they heard that he was addressing them in the Hebrew language, they became even more quiet. And he said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up in this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, according to the strict manner of the law of our fathers, being zealous for God as all of you are this day. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering to prison both men and women, as the high priest and the whole council of elders can bear me witness. From there I received letters to the brothers, and I journeyed toward Damascus to take those also who were there and bring them in bonds to Jerusalem to be punished. As I was on my way and drew near to Damascus, about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Rise, and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all that is appointed for you to do. And since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, I was led by the hand by those who were with me, and came into Damascus. And one Ananias, Ananias a devout man according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me, and standing by me said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour I received my sight and saw him. And he said, The God of our fathers anoint, appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear a voice from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to everyone of what you have seen and heard. And now, why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. When I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that in one synagogue after another I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments, garments of those who killed him. And he said to me, Go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Up to this word they listened to him. Then they raised their voices and said, Away with such, with such a fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. And as they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the tribune ordered him to be brought into the barracks, saying that he should be examined by flogging, to find out why they were shouting against him like this. 
But when they had stretched him out for the whips, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, Is it lawful for you to flog a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned? When the centurion heard this, he went to the tribune and said to him, What are you about to do? For this man is a Roman citizen. So the tribune came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? And he said, Yes. The tribune answered, I bought this citizen for a large sum, Paul said, but I am a citizen by birth. So those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately, and the tribune also was afraid, for he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had bound him. But on the next day, desiring to know the real reason why he was being accused by the Jews, he unbound him and commanded the chief priests and all the council to meet, and he brought Paul down and set him before them. Now we have some application questions for you guys to share with your family, friends, and small group members. Question one. In Acts 21, the Holy Spirit tells Paul that he would suffer if he goes to Jerusalem. The reason for this was not to make Paul run away, but it was to ready his heart for what was to come. Likewise, we too need to be ready to face hardships. What is the hardship that you need to prepare for? Question two. In Acts 22, the Jews try to frame Paul and get him killed. However, Paul defends himself. When we are falsely accused with lies, what is the right way to react to such a situation? And the third and final question, what repentance of faith, what repentance or decision of faith does Jesus want you to make through today's message? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you uh, for the book of Acts and for these two chapters that we have read and are able to start our day with. Lord, as we look onto Paul and his journey to Jerusalem, I pray that you will help us to be able to replicate the boldness and the faith that uh, Paul had towards you and your promises and your faithfulness. And I pray, Lord, that as we may sometimes find ourselves in um, unfair situations, I pray that you will help be able to lead us in wisdom and so that we may be able to deal with it in a wise and righteous and loving manner. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Embrace Jesus. Embrace people.